Dearly beloved, welcome to the third installment of the Summer Workshop series. Today it is called, I don't even know how we came up with this idea, but Puff the Hippie Dragon. This is a point of view workshop where you're going to be sharing your unique philosophy, your point of view, what makes your perspective on the topic that you cover unique and different from others who may be speaking on that topic. And just a little bit of a warning. You know, we've all seen Shark Tank. We've all seen Dragon's Den, or at least clips of it, or we've heard of it. And in those particular shows, the, dra the, the dragons and the sharks can be pretty harsh. You know, they might tell you that your project is worthless, but we're not that kind of dragon. Tad and I are friendly dragons. We're here to lift you up. We're here to encourage you. We're here to help you get more refined and more clear with your point of view. So don't be afraid as you go through the process today. We're friendly dragons. We're here to lift everybody. Um, so this is the third workshop, I think out of six for our summer series. Um, all of the recordings for all the workshops happen on the page you registered on. So after the events go live, we post the recordings. You can get all the previous workshops so that by the end of the series, all of the, the video and audio versions of them will be right there for you to watch or listen to anytime you want. And without further ado, I'm going to pass this over to the other friendly dragon here. Tad, can you hear me? I can hear you. All right. I'm going to pin you now. Take it away, buddy. Okay. Well, welcome. It's going to just that audio a little bit. There we go. Good to be here with you all. What We're going to dive right in. So if you're here, you're interested in this idea of doing a signature workshop. And one of the most important parts of the signature workshop is articulating your point of view. One of the ways I'd invite you to think about this is if there was a phrase you were going to repeat 10 times, I said, you have to repeat a certain phrase, the core message, the one idea you want people to walk away with 10 times, what would that be? That's the, that's the thought here. Because that's the thing that we're making the case for in our signature workshop. We're trying to not make the case that they sign up with us, join our program, you know, opt in for the course we're offering. We're trying to make the case for an approach we're trying to make the case for a way of looking at this issue in this situation. So we thought one of the most helpful things would be, there's a lot of theory I could go into. Uh, I've got a series of webinars. It's probably six hours of content about point of view marketing. But I thought what might be more useful is just to, to dive right in. So here's the idea. I'm gonna type out a statement and you're, it's a fill in the blanks. And I'm going to invite you to fill in the blanks here. So it's, I think the reason that blank kinds of people struggle with blank uh, symptoms is blank. So this is a fill in the blanks. Put that in the chat. So I think the reason the blank kind of people struggle with blank kinds of symptoms is blank. So I might say, for example, I think the reason that a lot of holistic practitioners struggle with growing their business is they don't have a clear niche. That would be one. I think the reason that a lot of uh, salespeople doing cold calling struggle is, you know, to make any sales is because they're, they're going for the clothes. They're not going for the truth. I think the reason that a lot of parents struggle with um, being loving and calm and centered with their kids is because they're, they're, they're stuck between either being authoritarian or per too permissive and they don't know how to balance it. Yeah. So that's the basic idea. So I'm going to invite you to just fill in those blanks, and then Bradley and I are going to go over them uh, one at a time, and uh, we'll just give some feedback. We'll ask some questions, offer some encouragement on the way. But you know, if somebody, if you had a group of people and they came to you and they said, "We're struggling with this," why? 
Why are we struggling? And you can tell they want to know the truth. They actually want to hear the, the, the real thing. What would you tell them? You know, they don't want you pulling any punches. They don't want you um, sugarcoating it for them. They actually want to know. And once you've typed yours, I'm going to invite you to read the other people's because it's a really interesting, it's a good exercise just to see that a, other people are reaching other people, but they may have a different point of view, or they may be doing something very similar to you and yet have a different core point of view about it. So we're going to set a timer here for three minutes. And then we'll start giving the feedback. You got three minutes to uh, get yours up. And we'll take it from there. Great to see so many up so soon. is the bell this is great there's a lot in here oh and heather uh i just saw you post this. you sent yours as a direct message to me so if you want to copy and paste yours and repost it that would be great awesome there's a lot we got a lot to go through here way to go everybody Tad, you're on mute. Do you want to take it away? <laughs> I did. I did. Sorry. Mind me. It's cool. So what I've read so far is really fantastic. So I just want to point out that this is the core of a signature workshop. What you have here is the seed. What you've got there is the, the beginnings and the, the bones of the thing. Number one, that the signature workshop is about a particular issue. There's a particular struggle people are having. There's something that they're wanting. And your core point of view, your core perspective or approach to that. And a phrase I'm going to invite you all to write down is this. Whether or not you work with me. Yeah, that's a key framing in this. So you can say, look. If you're in this room, it's because you're struggling with this, because that's the title of the workshop, so you're here because of that. What I want to share with you today is my approach to it, and whether or not you work with me, this is the approach I recommend. This is the point of view. This is the message I want to get across. This is the thing I most want you to hear, whether or not you work with me. So we're trying to be useful to them, regardless of, of, of whether or not they sign up and they buy. 
So here's the next exercise. I'm gonna give you five minutes on this. Imagine, this is so important. Your people are jaded, they're cynical, they're bitter, they have been burned a lot of times, probably, before they've reached you. And you're standing up there saying, well, here's what's really going on with your situation. This is my core diagnosis. But now they want some proof. Yeah, they want some evidence. So I'm going to give you five minutes. And this is just for yourself, but we're going to invite some people to share in a minute. If you had five, okay, in five minutes, I just want you to write down what's your, what's your, yeah, what's the proof? What's your evidence? What's your, how would you make this case that that is true? How would you impress upon them? Look, whether or not you work with me, here's, here's the point I want to make, and here's why I'm making that point. Yeah? So five minutes to just work on how would you do it? What's exhibit A? What's exhibit B? What's exhibit C? Where is the, um, what are the reasons this is true that are compelling, that makes sense, yeah? So five minutes, I'll set a timer. And I'll, I'll just add to that as well um, before we dive in is like, this is also ties into your story. So um, your story helps to showcase this is why I believe what I believe to be true. Um, and you can also focus on case studies, other people's stories that you've worked with that you took them from island A to island B and you saw them get this results and you've seen these results consistently based on these, these challenges they were faced with. So just something to contextualize, your story is one of the evidence pieces probably and case studies of other people's stories might be or research that you've done. Okay, carry on with the, the questions there, which I just posted in the chat. Great, yeah, thank you, Bradley. Yes, exactly that. Yeah, what are you trying to prove or make a case for? You're trying to make a case for that last statement. The reason I think they're struggling with blank is blank. That last blank, you're trying to make a case for it. As Bradley's saying, case study stories are one of the best ways. Your story is great. Could be stories of clients. But I also want to know the mechanisms. I want to understand the underlying logic. I want you to show me how part A connects to B, C, D. I want you to draw a line between your um, theory and the reality. Yeah. Yeah, as, as clearly as possible. Pearson yeah. asks, uh, uh, can you give an example? So an example would be like, every single one of you need to craft and tour a signature workshop. I created one workshop that's 60 minutes. I've toured it on 30 virtual stages and grown my email list by over 5,000 people. One of my clients, Anthony, he created a signature workshop. He's toured it 10 different times and his email has been growing significantly ever since and he's selling more people into his flagship trainings. And so those are like very simple examples. They're true stories. They help to make the case and drive home like this is why I believe what I believe. Yeah. And I might, I could, I mean, I've got six hours of webinar footage on why I think point of view marketing and making the case for that. So I might say, yeah, the reason you don't have the credibility and trust and that people who might even find your work relevant aren't buying is because uh, you just don't have the credibility and that comes from you haven't shared your point of view. You haven't made the case for your approach and so they're sitting on the fence. And what's my evidence for that? Well, man, man I could give tons. But one of the pieces, sometimes it's just an anecdote. Uh, I, I'll give the the story of, you know, imagine I tell you to go to a workshop and you go and it's terrible. But the pitch is really good. The workshop's awful, but the pitch at the end is good. Do you sign up? You don't. But if you go to, if I send you to a workshop and it's fantastic, it's a great workshop. And then the pitch is terrible. You probably still want to sign up. Yeah. So you can direct people back to their own experience as evidence. Hey, haven't you had this experience? And wasn't it true that you know, it was like this. And wouldn't it be true that it might be like this? People can say, oh, so that can be evidence too. But this is, uh, I'll stop talking. We're going to give you five minutes. This is just the challenge. Because what I want you to imagine is somebody in the audience maybe stands up and says, you're full of shit. I don't believe you at all. Prove it. Well, that's rude. But okay, it's a fair question. Why should I trust you? 
why should I trust you that that's the real reason? Because somebody else told me it was something else. So you just got to make the case for it. That's all. Okay, so. I just posted question one and question two in the chat for all of you to work through in case any of you have shown up a little bit late. Right, so five, yeah, so five minutes for everybody. Just think about how would you prove it? And then we're gonna invite people to uh, feel brave to raise their hands and we'll take some shares and we'll just talk it through. But do, do your best, this is just for you. Don't have to put this in the chat, the evidence, just write it yourself. And we'll, we'll take some vocal shares later. I'm gonna go through the chat while you're all working on this exercise and comment on some of the ones that have been posted as well.
from that exercise. So uh, if you would like some coaching from Bradley and I uh, on this, if you feel like, yeah, I've got a pretty clear, uh, finished that first sentence in pretty well. Uh, I think I've got some good evidence, but I got some questions. Maybe I feel stuck. Uh, I'm not exactly sure about something. Just click the reactions button at the bottom, hit raise your hand. And we'll uh, let's just go through uh, one by one. Okay, so very first we got Fran. Welcome, Fran. Where are you calling in from? Greetings, greetings. I'm from South Africa. It is quite dark here, so my camera's off. Cape Town, South Africa. Hi. Welcome, welcome. So, what? Uh, so, if you could just read us out what you came up with in the first sentence and what your evidence is, and we'll take it from there. Sure. So I think the reason that spiritual seekers struggle with trusting themselves is they are not grounded. And um, I feel it is important to understand that we are here living the human experience, not to transcend it. So if we keep running away from our current reality and live in the woo-woo land, spiritually bypassing and not doing the inner work, then we won't trust our decisions um, because they're not based in this current reality. Right. What, can you read this statement again? <clears throat> I think the reason that spiritual seekers struggle with trusting themselves yeah. is they are not grounded. Okay, so the, the struggle is with trust. They're not trusting themselves. So if somebody said, well, I think, you know, they don't trust themselves because they're not in touch with their intuition and their intuition is, is a connection to, to the divine, what would you say? Can you repeat that, please? Sure. So I say, well, I disagree because I think trusting ourselves come, comes from being in touch with our conscience or our intuition, our, our, and that, that's our connection to the divine. That's not the earth. You know, the the real self-trust comes from that connection to the great beyond. And that's so far beyond our bodies and this earth. And that's what would, what would you say to that? Um, I'd say you've got a great point there. <laughs> yeah, so, I am a little stumped because I'm trying to link this into my business. And this is a core belief I have. I just don't know if I'm wording it correctly. Yeah, well, it's good. It, by the way, you're all welcome to fail here. We'd rather you fail here than out, out in public, or you're welcome to strike. You know, that's just how it is. But here's here's what I might say is say, well, that's true. But the way we experience that is through our body. The way that we experience that connection to the divine is through our body. And mm -hmm. if we're not in touch with our body, we're not going to be able to hear that. Yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. Other evidence you can do, and by the way, the evidence can tie into this third part of the um, signature workshop thing is, can you give people an experience or can you ask people to remember, like, can you remember a time when you had a gut sense not to do something, but you still did it and it was really bad? Or your whole body was telling you to do something you didn't and you've regretted it forever. You know, what was happening in your body? Okay. Um, or have you ever had a time when you got in a very dangerous situation and you just were caught totally off guard what do you mean this is dangerous you know well if you're disconnected from your animal body if you're just mm -hmm. then you're not going to know you're not going to be aware so yeah have you gotten into relationships with people who were absolutely everyone else could see it and you couldn't did you um go into an environment a bar walk down a street that you know you realize now is da was dangerous. Like, well, what was I thinking? I was so young. And well, maybe you just weren't that in your body. So these are the types of things that we can give as evidence. So mm -hmm. let me just open it up here. So I'm going to post a little um, thing in the chat. And it's this. So, okay. So uh, this Fran. Or Fran, what other evidence do you see? So you can hit a reply to that, the little thought bubble that comes up and click reply or just put Fran's name, uh, please put capital F-R-A-N colon so she'll know it's for her. 
And if you have any other ideas of evidence, like how could Fran make this case? Yeah, how could Fran uh, speak compellingly about this in a way that would, would people would say, oh yeah, that makes sense. Because this is what we need is for people to, it just has to make sense for them. They have to hear it and say, oh yeah, I can see how following this path would help me get from island A to island B. From, you know, just not trusting myself to trusting myself. Yeah, getting grounded. Also, so what do you what do you mean by getting grounded? You're asking me now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the work I actually do is with cacao. So it works very much around the heart space. So it's about feeling, you know, the saying of you've got to feel to heal. But just to start to connect into the body, um, trust the emotional space, um, just start to familiarize oneself with that space in a world where we live so disconnected from anything but the head. Right. Okay. So this is further evidence you could give is that there's immense emotional intelligence or there's immense intelligence outside of the brain. I mean, there's this scientific research on the gut, you know, and uh, the heart of, um, you know, the gut has more nerve endings than the brain, something like this. So you could give this as evidence. Look, your body has an intelligence that your, your logical thinking mind doesn't have. Yeah. So you could lean on that. But what else do people have? So let's see. For Fran... Maduri said, uh, before becoming God conscious, one needs to become conscious of one's own feelings and needs. Right. So you could just say, hey, here's why. Um, what else? So for Fran, uh, so Fran says, shadow work also needed to integrate the parts that have been previously considered unacceptable. Okay. So I'm not asking you to make a different case. Right. Uh, I'm asking you to tie it in specifically to the grounded thing. And a part of it is like our first session we did was around origin stories. Yeah. Stories are powerful ways to communicate the proof, to take the idea and help deliver the teachings through your own personal story, the story of others. It could be the story of the science around this particular topic. Like there's ways that you can deliver the information to help it land in people in a way that feels like, oh, I, I understand it. If you can back a story up, your perspective or your point of view with science, with a story, like that's kind of like the triple whammy that we're looking for here. Yeah, beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it, could be, it could be a direct experience you give them. It could The experience could be, we're going to drink some cacao right now. Um, and I'm going to guide you through a little experience with that, or uh, you know, hard to do if you're not in person. Um, one of the other things I would say that's very important for homework is, how are you defining grounded? What does that mean? Because for a lot of us, when we hear that, we think, oh, bare feet on the ground. Hmm but you, you're meaning uh, something else by it. So there you go. Thank you so much for raising your hand. Uh, we're going to move on to Thank Tasha. You. Yes, you're welcome. Okay. Tasha, what have you got? Oh, me? I, I got to type in. Oh, you muted yourself. Okay. Um, so um, I think that the reason bullied, bullied women struggle with self-worth with self is because the bully has hijacked their inner critic. Okay. So bullied women, they struggle with self-worth because it's the, that's the mechanism. It's the, it's the inner critic. Yeah. Something about that action has um, done something to their inner critic. Mm. Okay. What else? might others make a different case on that? Might others say, no, that's not why they struggle? Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's true. And this was, this was, this was a realization that I had that the voice in my head, that critical voice that always was 
the conversation was always I was telling myself I was not good enough, I was not enough, I was not smart enough, I was not worthy. What I realized is the qualities of that voice were the same qualities. And so I mapped it across to my experience of being bullied. So that's where that realization came from. And that that, that experience had actually shaped my beliefs around myself. So that's that's what I'm referring to when I'm saying it's kind of hijacking. Everyone has an inner critic, but what happens is that that becomes, with the experience of bullying, that becomes exacerbated. So it kind of goes into overdrive. And it becomes the voice of the bully. Like that's yeah. the voice. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. So what's the evidence you've got for that? So my own experience, and then I have an example of a client I was working with when her ex- which she had a realization that when she hit puberty, something that her father had said to her was something that she'd carried through all her life. And she's sort of 66 now and she knows the exact words. And that has what has shaped her in her whole self-belief and way she sees herself. So there's an example. Um, I, I do work around the unconscious mind and the way in which memories and beliefs so beliefs and emotions are attached to memories and that if you can un- unattach the emotions, which it's possible to do, then then the memories don't have the ability to kind of trigger in the same way. So there's a kind of unhooking that can be done there. Right. So it's, it's the, when you say the hijacking, it's not just that they've become the voice, but something about the the trauma of that plus their voice has now installed various beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So that's, that might be a deeper cut. So it's right. And the, okay. And so the inner critic is this voice of these, these beliefs that are so harmful. Mm -hmm. So, you know, one thing I could say, and by the way, again, I'm going to invite everyone, see if you can think of one other piece of evidence that you could give for this, that case being made. Can you say the statement again, the first statement? I think the reason bullied women struggle with self-worth is because the bully has hijacked their inner critic. Okay. So let's see, could, could everyone on this call, in a comment, again, type Tasha, all caps, colon, so we know she knows it's for her. Can you think of, uh, why is that true? Can you think of evidence for that? Why might it be true that a woman's self-worth gets so messed up by this bullying, becoming this voice of this inner critic? Can you think of other, right, right and saying, right, uh, the, her brain has accepted the critical message, now it's comfortable repeating it as a belief. You know, other evidence I could see is, well, maybe you had to at a certain time mm-hmm. to survive. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, for whatever reason, to fit in, to belong, there's that. Uh, ah, right. Simon said, we almost always believe the worst, negative bias. Yeah. Right. We said something negative about me, must be true. Yeah. How we, uh, mm. yeah, and maybe, you know, what's what's happening is, yeah, you live in a society that isn't great for your self-worth. And so you kind of, you come in feeling already a little bit bad about yourself, but then the bully says, and it's you, it's because you're stupid and you're, you're too skinny, you're too fat, you're too dumb, you're too smart, you're too whatever. And they say those words and it yeah. lands on something. And it's like, well, I was looking for a reason and that must be it. So part of this, what I'm trying to lead towards is if you can give a mechanism, it's very helpful. Okay. If you can give a mechanism of this is how this happens. And therefore, here's what we can do about it. You know, it's not just that they said something. It's not just that it became a voice, but that voice became a belief. Yeah. The other thing I think you could give as evidence is to have everyone close their eyes and just to say, you know, if you'd be willing to reflect on your inner critic, what is what is it that, you know, write down, what is it that your inner critic says? You know, you don't have to share this with anyone in the group. This is just for you. What are those, the harshest voices in your mm. mind saying, you know, in those low moments? And then to ask them to think, whose voice is that? Yeah. 
is it your voice or is it somebody else's that experience they might say oh my mm-hmm. god they might not even know whose it is but so wait a minute that's not my voice or god yeah, that's my father that's my mother that's my high school bully that's my boss that's my whoever it was mm-hmm. um right okay margit said uh, also research on self-esteem of marginalized populations includes women mm-hmm. certainly i mean the one that comes up immediately is in the uh, Irish potato famine. The, uh, mm. There were a lot of Irish people who survived the potato famine, who made it through all of that, get to Liverpool, and they're treated with such cruelty by the, the English people there that they mm. killed themselves. So the, the impact, so this could be part of the research on mm. what the impact of bullying. What's the science that's been done on the impact of unkind words being said to somebody you know yeah um because people might say that tasha i mean i get it but you're kind of you're exaggerating that's not that's not one of the big reasons you know there's bigger fish to fry so you can still acknowledge there's other reasons but say look mm-hmm. i, I want to make a case for the significance of being bullied um yeah well and i think on the flip side of that the one of the objections or arguments somebody might have is like Okay, you say that, but look at all the people who were heavily bullied that turned out amazing. What about uh-huh. them? They didn't have this thing. So, like, how do you differentiate between their stories and the stories of people who are that inner critics beating them down and they're staying in that small space based on what the bully said to them? Exactly. <laughs> because, right, this is what happens with people is they say, because we're saying, here's the reason. And then they start finding exceptions and they say, yeah, but yeah. we have. What about all those people? So your your uh, your theory is bunk, and I'm leaving, you know, or I'm I'm just tuning out now because I found the loophole. So this is one of the exercises I would give to everyone here is to think about what are the criticisms of this critique that somebody might give you. You know, what's the thing that somebody might say? No, 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 it's not that. It's this. Uh-huh. Right. And then how would you respond to that? Because that can also go in your signature workshop. Like, look, I know you might think it's X, Y, Z, but it's actually ABC is primary. And here's why. Or, yes, it's also X, Y, Z. That's true. But it's ABC as well. And we can't dismiss this. You know, how would you respond? Yeah. Um, Emily said, the voices we hear outside of us as children become our inner voices as adults. Yeah, and you can, you can, there's probably research and studies on that, but also if you can just direct them to their own experience, their own memories of this. Um, or, hey, do you all have a friend who thinks they're no good at singing, even though they've got a beautiful voice, or they think they're ugly, even though you, God, you're so beautiful. Or they think they're stupid, even though they're smart. Can anyone think of a friend like that? You know, invite them to write down the name. And so you can say, look, see, it's the capacity is there, and yet they've been bullied. Let's see what it's done. Mm. All of that is evidence. Um, mm. The I'm just looking over. Um, ah, this is a great one. Uh, Jenny says, so because they, meaning the bullies, have the ability to hone in on their weak spots. So it was already an insecurity, but the bully yeah. Yeah. But yeah. The knows what's going to hurt the most, and that's where they punch you. Yeah, 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 absolutely. But without the bully, it might have been sort of uh, chronic, low-lying, but with the presence of the bully saying this. Amplification. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah bullying is, uh, Barb is saying, bullying is traumatic and trauma is lodged in the body and mind in very insidious ways. I mean, yeah, there's tons of research you could give about trauma. Here's how trauma lives on when it's not mm-hmm. resolved. Mm. Here's 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 the mechanism. Um, we have research around Stockholm syndrome. That's yeah, very true. Yeah, people uh, t- kidnapped, held hostage, and end up. You know, I love the people who mm. could be a connection there. Yeah. Um, Chitra said, not only has she accepted the evidence for safety, but is now looking for more evidence from advertising society and relationship. Yeah, it becomes this feedback loop. Of, I already think maybe I'm not that great. Somebody confirms it forcibly, and they are shunned from a group because of it. 
and now they're even looking for more evidence. Now more it's, evidence. Yeah. Like the, you sort of put on, it's like it becomes a pair of glasses and you see the world. I talk a lot about kind of seeing that through that becomes the lens through which you see the world. So you're looking for what what's a kind of match, yeah. what, what, re, what reinforces, what affirms that. Yeah. And so part of what we then do in a signature workshop and with our point of view is not just the diagnosis, but also the prescription. When we say, based on this understanding, here's what you need to do. Here's the approach to solve this issue. That's what we're trying to make the case for. Okay, Tasha, there's more. I can't read them all, but some really Thank you so things. much. And thank you, everyone. That's amazing. Thank you so much. You got lots really. of news to go copy and paste there into a Indeed doc. That. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, Alicia, you're up next. Thank you, Chan. I apologize for not having a camera, but this um, computer just doesn't have one. So my statement is, I think the reason that parents struggle with helping their children with math homework is because they have false beliefs about math, learning math, and what it means to help someone with math. Okay. Could you read that one more time? I just want to make sure it's all the way in. Sure. I think the reason that parents struggle with helping their children with math homework is because they have false beliefs about math, about learning math, and about what it means to help someone with math. So now this is a business you currently have? Uh, yes. And how's it going so far? Um, slowly, because I've just settled into this niche. <laughs> and so the, the idea of the niche is that there are parents who, their kids are struggling in math and they want to help, but they don't feel able to? Yes. So I'm a parent coach, and in particular, I'm interested in helping parents where the stress uh, comes a lot from academic performance. And so I'm starting with math because that's my background, this math education. Okay. So you're a parent coach, and one of the core sources of stress for parents is helping their kids in school, um, and they feel really sort of disabled when it comes to that. Yes. Okay. And you find that there are enough parents who, for whom this is a really big deal, like, the, oh, God, I, I just really want to help my, like, why do they want to the, help their kids with academic performance so much? Well, I think most parents want their kids to be successful in, math, in, in school. And that of all the subjects that parents generally are most frustrated with trying to help with math, um, because the ways of, of teaching math and doing math have changed so much. A lot of parents, you know, are like, that's the new math. I don't know it. Or the parents don't remember, how do you solve algebraic equations? And they believe that in order to coach their kids and help their kids do better, they have to understand the math. But that's actually a false thing. Okay. So your, your take is that parents actually don't need to understand the math themselves and they can still support their kid and doing well in it without getting it themselves. Exactly. Okay. So I would, um, I might in this case, broaden it and just speak to, yeah, you know how a lot of parents, um, they want to support their kids in school with their academic stuff. It really matters to them. That just sounds like that's who your people are. They're people because I know there's some parents who's like, oh, you didn't do well in math. Well, great. You know, um, they wouldn't care at all. But these are parents who do. So that's one criteria. And you say, okay, so your 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 kids are struggling in academics, and I might just put in particular math. And um, they want to help them, but yeah, they don't know how. So island B for them is my kids looking up at me saying, wow, thank you so much for all your help. And their grades are improving. They come home with a report card. The report card's great. That's the island B. And then your take is that the thing that stops them from helping their kids get there is there's some kind of limiting beliefs, in particular that they think they need to actually be an expert in those subjects to help their kids. Correct. And they also, I think the most primary thing is that they don't understand 
how people learn and the fact that the lizard brain has to feel safety and the dog brain has to feel connection before the human brain can actually learn. Okay, that's great. So, so the first thing parents have to learn to do is to be well-regulated themselves and to offer co-regulation to their child. Beautiful. Right. Okay. So what are the factors of that would, what are the other factors that would make, allow a parent to really help their kids? So one of them is being regulated so that their kid can actually feel safe and relax and their, their mind can open up. Right. Uh, what else? Another thing is to have um, a physical environment that is productive. Okay. So great. to be able to, you know, observe your kid and know if they need to move away from the window or yeah. toward a window. Right. Okay, what else? And then very concretely, a list of questions to ask their kid when their kid is stuck on a problem. And what are those kinds of questions? Things like, does this remind you of any other problem you've solved before? Can you describe this problem in your own words? How is this problem different than what you've done before? Can you draw me a picture? What are the objects that are in the problem? What are the relationships among the objects? Beautiful. Okay. So I think I could, I could see rewording the, the, the niche statement to be something like, um, you know, I, I help parents um, support their kids in doing well in school, even if they don't know anything about the subjects, something like that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that could be the signature workshop, how to help your kid get straight A's, um, even if you don't know anything about the topic. And then, you know, it because that's going to sound too good to be true. So then immediately you're going to have to say, look, I know this may sound mad, but you would think the only way to help them is you have to know a lot more than them. But actually the way you can help them is, and, you know, I can see other questions you know, with a kid being like, um, hey, is there somebody in your class who, who can help you? Right. Who's really smart. Hey, could you make some time with your teacher to talk about this, that one could coach and guide them to find their own resources? Because as soon as I hear that, because it's interesting, I, you know, my guess is this is probably true for a lot of you on the call. When she started talking, you just like, that doesn't make any sense. How could you help somebody with math if you don't know math? There's some part of you that's just, this is not credible. I don't get it. And that's what we don't want because the confused mind says no. The confused mind says no. So if they're sitting there thinking, oh, that doesn't make sense, and you don't tie it down a bit, and you don't say, and here's how. Here's why this is true. Let me share the logic. And as Alicia did, I thought, oh, man, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I can see that. Um, beautiful, Alicia. Great work. That's great. And a part of the uh, the learning process here is like you started with a statement and then you see how Tad's just like poking holes in the theory and pulling out more threads of clarity. And this is where your job as a content creator in writing articles, having podcast conversations, making YouTube or social media videos, live streaming, etc., that's how the point of view gets clearer and clearer and clearer and more impactful is the more you create, the clearer you get about what you're actually saying. Yeah. And then all of that gets funneled back into the signature workshop. That's the idea. So the signature workshop is kind of the greatest hits. It's the best, the, the best of. It's the here's my core thesis and the best evidence I have. It's not in an hour. I mean, you're not going to solve a problem for people, but you can tell people here's the way I would solve it. Here's the best way to do it. Here's here's what it is. Here's here's why. Let me make the case. It's a really beautiful thing. If you've been feeling stuck on something for so long and you don't know why you're stuck, you know, being in pain is not the worst thing. The hardest thing is you don't know why you're in pain. Not having context is terrible. And this there's a difference I would make here. Um, and we're going to have to wrap up. And I, I want to keep going to, to support you all. But um this is a recent distinction. Your social media posts, if you do them, your email newsletters, your, um, you know, the, this is content, 
right? That's content. The signature workshop is context. That's what you're aiming at. Not just here's a bunch of isolated ideas, but a very well-crafted, here's the thing, here's how it all fits together. Here's the 30,000 foot view of all of it. You know, and if you want more kind of discrete bits of content, you can check me out on, on these very, on, on my YouTube. But the signature workshop is where you give them the, the sort of, here's the, the big picture. Here's the main idea. Here's the main direction to go. Whether or not you work with me, head in this direction. So that statement you wrote down, the reason they're struggling is this. That's the direction you're pointing them in. But you can imagine they start walking. It's like, ah, maybe she was full of shit. Maybe he didn't really know what he was talking about. So <laughs> what we want is to make enough of a case that even if it wasn't us they hired, that they'd at least be going in the right direction. Yeah. So that's the idea. So that statement you wrote, I mean, really, almost all of them I read, it was great. It was good. So you can imagine that as a seed for your signature workshop. Now, what do you title it? There's some important wordsmithing to do. There's probably some honing to do about the island A, the island B, that what's the symptom, what's the result they want. There's probably also some honing to do around what's the, that core pithy phrase that you might repeat. But consider that a seed out of which a signature workshop could grow. And just know that the main, the thing that gets them in the door for the signature workshop are those first two blanks, right? Oh, I'm a burned out nurse, right? That's who it is and what the problem is. That's what gets them in the door. Uh, if you promise a result, that's what gets them in the door. But the thing that is going to have them be interested in working with you will be if you can make a case for that third blank, which is the reason I think they're struggling with this is blank. So getting in the door, that's the first hurdle. But getting them to even consider you as an option, that's the next hurdle. So uh, I'll wrap my part up there. Bradley, anything else you want to say? Well, I guess we should talk about the, uh, we've got the signature workshop thing. Do you want to talk about that? I'll get the link. Yeah, I could just take a moment. Um, and just so you all know, so you've all heard the shtick, uh, probably we're doing this training at start September 12th, where you're going to craft and tour your signature workshop. Um, and this is basically, this is what I've created for how I, my main primary way of growing my audience for Magic Media right now is I have my Thriving in Business Without Social Media workshop. I've done it about 30 times. It's grown my list by over 5,000 people. When you grow your list by that much, you obviously grow your revenue at the same time. It's the simplest, most scalable strategy I've ever implemented. So a part of the magic here is you're gonna get feedback every step of the way. Uh, our, we have our community inside my Magic My community that you'll be connected with all the other participants. I think we're getting close to 50 people signed up so far. The first session is digging in much deeper into this uh, that Tad's going to be leading. It'll be a two hour session and we'll have a thread for all of you, just like we had the Zoom thread today. There's going to be a thread where all of you will be posting your point of view statements and you'll be getting feedback. So it'll be a lot more in depth in that two week space between the first and the second session where you actually start to map out your signature workshop. Um, the craft your offer section, we're gonna support you with the copywriting, explaining it, designing the landing pages. We have landing page templates that you can use and plug into. Uh, the marketing of your signature workshop. So how do you promote both internally and when you start to do outreach? I've created, I mean, we work with a lot of uh, clients and partners and so we've created amazing templates to basically create a whole ecosystem of templates from your outreach email to how you research and create the spreadsheet to stay organized to designing a media page with all your pre-written email social media posts banners etc so when somebody says yes you have a copy paste email where they book their date you onboard them you get them their the, all the media that they need to promote your signature workshop duplicate your template etc there's there's a lot more than just teaching a workshop that goes into this um and we've just figured out streamlined processes to make that happen you will actually be between november 8th and the 20th you're going to deliver your workshop for real whether it's to your audience to people within the training or to 
a small group of clients and friends, depending on your comfort level uh, and how you want to do it. But everybody in the training will be delivering their signature workshop during this process. Uh, and then we'll we'll set you up with all the templates. And basically, by the end of this, we'll be finishing up December 5th. You're going to have your marketing strategy dialed, your systems dialed, and you'll be ready to take your signature workshop on tour for all of 2025. And if you're like me, you'll be happy to leave social media because you won't need it anymore. You really won't. Uh, the price, it's $8.95. The price goes up on August 1st by another $100. So we get to our full price. We've been doing this early bird. If you like pricing strategies, this has been a fun experiment um, where instead of doing a big $400 discount at the beginning of the launch, we've been just incrementally raising the price every month till it gets to the full price of the training. Uh, and it's been it's been a really fantastic pre-sale strategy. If any of you are looking for interesting ways to get more people signing up early rather than in the last 24 hours of a launch. Um, and then I have my Magic Mind community. And if you join that, you get, we do three live coaching calls a week. We have all my templates, all my trainings. There's a lot. Uh, and this particular training is also included in that. So if you're looking for more of a payment plan, that would be the way to go. And I reckon you can get all the details that you need on the page. Uh, the link is in the chat. It's going to be awesome. There's going to be a lot of amazing people. One of the exciting parts that we're going to be integrating this year that we didn't do last year is that we're going to be playing, helping play matchmaker inside of the community where as you create your signature workshop and when it comes time to learn how to tour your signature workshop, you're going to be basically matching up with other people that have complimentary audiences and you can host each other. So straight out of the gate, you can start booking each other for your signature workshops for the new year so that you can kick off the year with some momentum. And I think that's, that's the shtick. That's the shtick. And also there are uh, the next event. What's the next free event that's coming up? Is... Uh, it's in August. It will be on August the 15th. And it is Draw Your Map, the elements of getting from point A to point B. And I imagine you're going to show your map and I'm going to show my mountain and people will have two different perspectives on how to visually showcase the journey you're taking people on. And exactly, exactly. All these ideas, the theories we have, we're going to put into an image, a visual. You may already have one, but uh, there may even be some time to go into a Zoom room and just share it with some others, get some feedback, and we'll do our best to give feedback to a few people uh, who are brave enough to share it. But having a visual, whether it's a Venn diagram, a pyramid, whatever it is, it's really, really helpful uh for a signature workshop to land for people so hopefully we'll see you on august 15th maybe we'll see some of you in the uh, signature workshop training thank you so much for coming and sticking around thanks everybody see you next time